welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold. Uh, today we'll try and finish up the uh, the attempt at making a plastic hammer out of. Actually, I, I lied about the milk jug stuff. That's actually a laundry soap, you know, a laundry detergent jug that I'm using. But uh, it's the same material anyway. Uh, sometimes you get to thinking about what something is, you know, and you go and do an internet search and you find more stuff than you think that uh, <laughs> than you expected and I was thinking about you know how the Americans and the British and the and so on uh, the uh, Australians are separated by common language you know I mean we say we, we talk in one way and they talk another and using basically the same words but there's a lot of stuff that's different for instance, they got lorries and we got trucks. And uh, from from little trucks up to big trucks, they're still pretty much trucks. You know, there might be a semi-trailer truck. There might be a pickup truck. And I mind not having enough constructive things to do. Got to wandering around. And I wondered, well, what are the British called pickup trucks? And so I did an internet search. And uh, I found out, you know, believe it or not, they call them pickup trucks. It seems that there's a size where something becomes a van and then above that it becomes a lorry. Uh, and what we call a semi-trailer truck, they call it an articulated lorry. But the interesting part about this was this is the second time recently <laughs> that I've come off uh, with something interesting uh, in the middle of uh, of you know, being involved with my truck. And I come across a BBC article, you know, uh, that some guy wrote about trucks in, in the U.S. And apparently he was even more offended by, by the idea of pickup trucks than he was by the idea of the Second Amendment, although he did throw that into the article. And uh, it seems he felt the engines were too big and the trucks were too heavy and and nobody carries anything in the back end of them anyway. And uh, I guess he just, he's not looking at it from, <laughs> from the same viewpoint as, uh, as us rednecks are. And I'll admit, I haven't had a truck since 1984. I don't know, yeah, about 84, 85, somewhere in there. And uh, so I finally got another one, and I'm glad I did. That I got what I wanted. And it's true, when I bought my truck, I uh, I didn't intend to haul anything in it. I didn't buy it to haul stuff. And I, I had a van before that, and I didn't buy it to haul stuff either. But I've taken that van and pulled the seats out and carried a couch and two reclining chairs in it with a, with a tailgate shut. So, you know, you do, you do haul some things. And in the month or two, a couple of, well, I used, I've had my truck maybe three or four months now, I guess. Anyway, uh, in that time, I actually did haul some stuff in it. I hauled plywood and two before and stuff for the foundation for the shed out there, and I hauled concrete blocks and bags of sand. I mean, bags of sand, yeah, they were bags of sand, which every one of them tended to leak and fill the back end of the bed full of sand for me to sweep out. So, you know, I did haul stuff with it, which is good. You can if you want to. But it wasn't my my intention. I didn't buy it for that. And he said, well, what the heck would you buy a truck for if you don't haul stuff? Well, for one thing, truck has a frame under it. An actual steel frame runs from the front to the back. Unless you've got some kind of aluminum truck. Maybe, maybe it's got an aluminum frame from front to back. But cars these days are made just like a tin can, like a soup can. They don't have any frame. The only, the only substantial piece on the car is the little cradle that goes under the engine and it bolts on to the to the car body you know the car body is not strong enough even to stand the uh, stress of its own engine and uh, a truck on the other hand is strong enough to hook a trailer on the back a seven nine my, in the case of my truck a seven thousand pound trailer can be hooked onto the back end of it and hauled while i'm hauling a, a half a ton of uh, load in the back of the truck so the truck is substantially better built than an automobile, whether then you know somebody thinks so or not. 
And then the guy in his article, he complained, you know, they got a huge engine and they can't go very fast anyway. Well, you didn't buy a truck to go out and get into any Le Mans, you know, races or something. You bought a truck to have a truck. And I got one four-wheel drive and he was sort of wishy-washy on how he felt about four-wheel drive. And I guess he had probably thought about the Range Rover and realized, you know, he'd have to criticize something at home. But, uh... Anyway, that, the wife and I sat down and figured out what we wanted. We wanted four-wheel drive. We wanted a, a double cab so we could haul around other people in the event that anybody ever wanted to go with us somewhere. And uh, we, you know, we wanted a pickup truck, but we did, we weren't buying a truck to work with it. We were buying a truck because number one, the four-wheel drive would get us through off-road where we want to go. We can go walk across the pasture and up the hills and, you know, all that kind of junk. And uh, on top of that, it's, it's a lot taller. I've got nine inches of clearance under the axles, which means I can go easily in a foot of water without getting water up in the cab. They can come in pretty dang handy, too. And, but there was another occurrence that was kind of strange. When I was at the lumber yard, I forgot two uh, two befores back building that shed, and I went back to get those, and I got them and threw them up in the bed. And I was getting a piece of rope tying them down because naturally they stick out some. And uh, some guy come driving up in a, in a Chevrolet pickup truck, and he began to tell me how my truck might be kind of fun, but it ain't no real truck, and I need to get a real truck so I can haul things. And I thought, whoa. Why, who, who, who's rattled this rude guy's chain, you know? And I was, you know, standing there, just, you know, my eyes open, at not, not having been, you know, accosted in that manner before. And, uh, the guy, and I told him, I said, well, I guess if I'm paying for it, I can get any kind of truck I want. And uh, then the boss lady her and said, well, this is my truck. And that, he kind of bubbled a little and drove off. And, uh, and I thought, what an idiot. You know, did he think that I wouldn't have sense enough to know how to buy a work truck if I wanted a work truck? I could have got one over $10,000 cheaper. You know, I didn't want a work truck. I don't know what a work truck is. Every redneck knows what one is, know what, knows what they look like. That's not what I wanted. I'm retired. I'm not working. So anyway, that was... <laughs> that was this, this week's truck experience. It's not very often, but... On rare occasion, you get a, a package from a viewer. I received this from one of my viewers today. You can see that the post office, uh, they really roughed up the box. And uh, it's a heavy box because it's, as far as I know, it's got machinist jacks in it. They, But I can tell you that they, they have given a run for his money there. <laughs> Look at a poor ragged box that they worked that booger over. So anyway, let's let's open it up and see what we got here. Um, I guess we can look around here on this side and open the little fella up. And let's see here. Let's just go ahead and cut this open right here and here. This is a pretty heavy box. Undoubtedly, everything in here is made out of steel, or maybe cast iron, or I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Here we go. Yes, these are rather substantial pieces of metal here. Undoubtedly, I need to put some things together um, let's see what we've got in this one here's the base to the little fellas I say little fellas they're actually pretty pretty big <laughs> yes they are they're, they're really big but uh, let's see if I can screw the screw down in there Like this. Well, that's certainly an A bomb size 
tool there. Let's see what we got here. Here's another base. And so here's this guy here. They look like they're really nice. You know, I mean, these, these are heavy duty. You get this guy all screwed in pretty good. It says Armstrong Brothers Tool Company, Chicago, USA. So, get down to this guy here. him back together there you go I didn't see a any kind of a, of a note in the box if there was one then it came out in shipment but this came from uh, Stanley Stanley Pendlem and he's over in Atlanta Georgia and I'm certainly do want to thank him for these uh, machinist jacks because I discovered the other day that I really needed some, and these these are certainly not sloppy jacks. These this this is some good stuff here. I all well, like say Stanley's. I'm, I'm you know sort of taking them off guard, and uh, and I'm uh, very thankful for the for the jacks. Thank you very much. Bubba's got a cousin, a cityfied kind of guy lives, you know in a big city and so his name is Skeeter Skeeter got got a little girl and, and uh, so like any any daddy would do it comes bedtime he goes and reads her a story you know and then he tucks her in and she says her prayers and, and she says God bless mommy and God bless daddy and God bless grandma and goodbye grandpa and Skeeter said, well, why'd you say that, honey? She said, I don't know. It just seemed like the thing to say. So he, you know, well, that's strange. He, the next day, Grandpa drops dead, you know. Skeeter thought, well, wow, that's, that's a heck of a coincidence, you know. So they go on, and the next time Skeeter's in there, read her a story, you know, and puts her to bed, and she's saying her prayers. And she says, God bless uh, Daddy, and God bless Mommy, and goodbye, honey. Grandma and Skeeter, oh, you know, this sounds serious. And sure enough, the next day, Grandma dies. And uh, well, Skeeter's starting to think, you know, this girl knows something. Yes, yeah, something's going on here. So later on, he's uh, reads her another story, puts her to bed, and she says, God bless Mommy and goodbye, Daddy. And, you know, his eyes come up big there. Oh, this don't sound good at all. So he, he thinks about it all night. You know, he can't sleep, can't go to bed, can't do nothing. So the next day, he don't go to work. He just stays back in the, his little room back in the back of the house there, his little study. And, uh, you know, he, he doesn't do anything that's going to be risky. And uh, looks like long towards, you know, getting along towards supper time. He figures, well, I've got it made. I, I got through the day, and, I, and I'm not dead yet. So his wife comes in, and you know, and he, he says, where you been? She says, well, I was down to the golf club. She says, and you won't believe what happened. She says, right in the middle of my golf lesson, the golf pro dropped dead. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess Skeeter don't have much better luck than Bubba. Uh, well, let's, let's go on and do the hammer now. And uh, we'll see if I manage to make anything. It's been a couple of days since we put this thing in the vise and uh, the weather in Texas has changed. It's back to wintertime temperatures. Went for the bench rest match and it was in the 40s. And it was okay right at first because the wind wasn't blowing, but by the time we got to the second target, the wind was gusting to about 25 miles an hour. And that cooled my hands down quite a bit. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with this. We'll be back to summer temperatures again before long. We've got that little bugger down in there. And that's one of the good things about this vise that when he opens up, the jaws open way out there. I haven't seen too many of them that do that. I don't know if they intended for me to take them out that far. That's probably a a misuse of it or something. We're going to try to use this as a method of pulling the uh, 
the plug out of there. I don't know if I screwed it in deep enough, but let's see what happens. <clears throat> and I may have to uh, get even more desperate with this thing. Let's, uh, let's see here. We got this. Lay him over there and use him to pry him on. it's not going to do that so and I put the duct tape on it so it wouldn't stick to the to the darn uh, plastic and that doesn't seem to be working out too well either so let's try again here. really deep down in there see if I can see if I can manage to pull it out probably not Let's see. Can't get a grip. All right, so I guess that leaves one other thing. I put it on a lathe and drill it up and uh, remove the wooden plug on the lathe. And then I'll, I'll try to thread the, um, the plastic and if I can pull it out like that, if that doesn't work, I can put a hole in here and try to put some air pressure on the bottom to drive it out. I knew there was a possibility of a problem, but I was ever optimistic that there wouldn't be, and of course there is. So I'll work on this a little and I'll bring the camera back when I get a little closer to trying again. I drilled it a little bit tight and then I put a half 13 thread in it. And now we're going to pull the at least the wooden plug out like this. I guess if, if I keep using this particular method, I'll have to make a new wooden plug every darn time, which, which might limit the amount of times <laughs> that I feel like doing this stuff. But here we come. The plug's coming out. Okay, I must have threaded a little bit into the plastic too, although I didn't intend to. Or else it just sunk in, one or the other. Okay, but I did run my, my tool bit in there until I got pieces of plastic coming out. So, I have it down in the plastic a little bit. We may have to continue with the with the thread in here move over and let's take a look oh, come on focus maybe that's going to change the focus there back it up there you go if you guys have been blown on the screen it would have focused a lot quicker but there's the plastic in there, and I did drill about a quarter of an inch into it, I guess, or else the, the maybe the maybe the bolt just sunk in that far pushing that wood out, because it did leave behind a few pieces of wood. And we'll we'll continue to try to get that out of there, and I'll bring the camera back on my next step. Okay, so look at this. I threaded it in there and forced it to come out so there we are and uh, you see some bubbles here this turn thing has got a, a little end there if I'm going to reuse it I'm going to have to uh, fill up that spot in the bottom end with junk that that won't interfere with the plastic but uh, let me get this bolt out of it and 
we'll machine the little booger see if we can make something out of the out of the plastic I changed out the chuck and uh, put the three jaw in because I don't see any need to to use the other one and I'm going to put this in here and face off that tail end that seems to be in the way here I guess that this will work just as good as any other way Let's see if it looks it's more or less straight. So it, it's funny that <clears throat> the stuff had actually shrunk in that tube, and all that was holding it was this thing here, I suppose, because all this area here had a gap between it and the side. So let's see. I need the same tool that I did the wood with. I'm guessing maybe I do and it's not in the tool holder here's one that'll do just as well we'll uh, crank it up on this thing well no I don't like that one we'll switch over I know I know I've got tools here and burn it. I'll just cut out the, the long part between finding the tools. This'll do. Maybe it's not perfect, but it'll do. I don't know if it's going to drag around in there or not. That's why I should really put a parting tool in there and just part the thing off. That's what I was afraid of. That burn it. Well, heh. You can turn it around that way and try again. What did I do with the, the wrench? Be nice to have one of those chucks that has a a wrench holder every couple of inches, or at least by every jaw. Oh, uh, that's not going to do like that. Tell you what, I'm going to I'm just going to cut this off on the darn saw, and I'll be right back. Undoubtedly, I didn't get it washed real good because it kind of yeah, it smells kind of like soap. But you, know, you can see little lines there that may be spots where the pieces are not stuck together or I don't know my finger doesn't feel a hole so I don't know we'll we'll try this thing again see if I can do it a little better let's see how close it looks to well it looks really a lot like it's straight so I guess we need to put a center in it and try it like that. The guys machining this, there weren't a lot of them doing it with a lathe. Although I think one or two might have. And I believe they put centers in it. All right. Now we can put a small live center in it. Really love this tailstock now that I got it fixed. It's always a nuisance having to crank it really hard to get it to come back. All right, so. One of the, of course, one of the problems with this great big old tool post is that I almost run out of travel there before I get the 
get the center started. All right, here we go. We can uh, we can machine wood. Dirty we can machine this. First mistake. <clears throat> back some that's faced off really nice I wonder if I can turn it around and make the other end look about the same. There's a couple of air holes. I can see there's a hole there. And there's another one close to it, but for the most part, that feels nice and slick and uh, really nice, really, to be honest with you. Let's, uh, let's turn this booger around and try to clean up the other end and see what we've got. <laughs> run into my uh, run into my live center so I can't use this tool to face it off. Well, hmm. I doubt it's going to sit there peacefully while I face it off, so I don't know. Got a big hole in it. We'll try the little one. I don't think it'll work. Gotta be right about there. This thing ain't even let me work. No, that's that's as close as I can get. And it's loose. Hmm. Back to the lantern tool post. That's the idea. I'll bring the camera back. Alright, so try to face it off. Just a little. Okay, so the way to get a hammer handle, if you don't have one man around, is to uh, is to make one. So that's what we're going to do here, and I'm going to start off here, and I'm going to probably cut about somewhere into there. I'll cut it until it looks like maybe a hammer handle is starting to show up out of it, and then I'll stop. And then maybe I'll just make a big mess. But this is a leftover piece of the banister from building the staircase in, when they built the house here. This piece down here was glued on. I didn't know that and I'm hoping not to be surprised by finding any more glued on stuff but it sure looks like a seam right along here and I may find more things that I don't like. It sure looks to me like that's a seam. Oh yeah. It sure does. Well, hmm. Why couldn't they have just made it out of one piece? This piece right here is big enough for a hammer handle. Maybe I'll turn off the camera and go whack this thing with a with a chisel or something a couple of times and see if I can't get it down to, to just one piece. Well, so you learn something new every day. That banister was made out of three pieces. So I'll try and get it down close to round in a few places, especially where I'll want to put the, the hammer head. And, uh, and then we'll... I've got some actual lathe tools to use. And it's been over 50 years since I took a wood shop class. And I don't, uh, I don't have any idea which of those, you know, Wood, woodworking lathe tools is for what. <laughs> so 
So they gave Matthias Wands a hard time here the other day for using the wrong tools, using the wrong gouge or whatever. And uh, I'm definitely not in Matthias Wandel, so I know I'm going to use the wrong one. All right, so this piece is even glued on to the end here. I can see the seam in it now. Is anything probably going to break on me? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Nothing's made out of a whole piece of wood anymore. Oh well. It's probably time to get the regular woodworking kind of tools out. So, I'll bring you back. We may or may not use any regular wood lathe tools on this thing because I, I'm not very skillful with them. And so, I may not <laughs> want to take a chance on getting knocked upside the head with one. I figure about a 10 degree angle should be about right before I go down to a smaller size. It's not going to be the prettiest uh, hammer handle in the world, but it'll be a handle. All right, so now just a bit of sanding for me and I'll cut the thing off and we'll put some kind of slick and shiny stuff on it and some, and then we'll be up to drilling the hole in the hammer head and assembling it. I'll bring you back in a little bit. I gave a short attempt at using these things and then I chickened out because I don't want to get one of these slammed up against my head, you know? Who knows, you could even knock out a tooth. So, I just used the regular lathe tools and finagled it around the best I could. I got one of my old girl friends, polyurethane, to coat the handle there. And uh, she's from a family of nice girls. I still go out with her sister, polyester, now and then. So, you know, that's an old guy, you know. They say old guys aren't fashion conscious or, or have good taste, so there you are. I have a bad habit of using end mills for drill bits, and here I'm doing it again. Now that moves. I'll be back when I get it tied down. Yeah, all right, let's give her a shot. Okay, there you are, and the smell of Arm & Hammer washing so laundry soap is strong. I guess I didn't clean it good, but it stuck together anyway. And it's got the grease from my, my greasy hands all over the, the yellow part, but uh, there you are, one HDPE, high-density polyethylene hammerhead. 
So I guess I've got three of the poly girls for girlfriends there. Polyester, polyurethane, and polyethylene. They need more imagination in their names. I, all of you guys that, that watch my channel and also watch the, you know, the firearms oriented channels like Hickok 45 and 22 Plankster and a bunch of those others probably already know that these guys have moved or built a duplicate channel over on the internet called the full30.com and they did this in anticipation of uh, of YouTube falling under the influence of the Bloomberg bunch or something and and banning them I know Hickok 45's channel disappeared for a few hours one day and he couldn't log in to find out why and they they brought it back because of a lot of protests he's got right at one one million nine hundred and something thousand subscribers so it's a pretty popular channel so anyway if your favorite gun channels disappear go over to the full 30.com and you can see them and if you're an advertiser I bet that'd be a good place to advertise and you can have specialized advertising because you know what the the target audience wants. Well, folks, that's uh, that's all this video, and uh, appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time, I suppose. Bye.